Kelly and I'm a chemistry teacher. Welcome to my channel, All About Chemistry. Knowing how the metric system works is an essential skill in chemistry. So today, I'm going to teach you about the metric system and how to convert metric units. I'm going to show you my shortcut for metric conversions that makes it really quick and easy. But first, here's a little background information. Long ago, measurements used to be a little different from place to place. For example, a foot in one town might be a little bit different than a foot in another place. As you can imagine, this must have made communicating measurements a little tricky. To solve this problem, the Système International d'Unité, also known as the SI system, was established. This system standardized the units for seven different types of quantities using the metric system. Take a look at the fundamental units for each quantity. Notice that volume is not one of them. That's because volume is derived from length, meaning if we measure the length, width, and height of a cube, we can multiply those values together to get volume. The volume of one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. Even though it's not one of the fundamental SI units, volume is used a lot in chemistry, so we're going to use it along with mass to do our metric conversions today. The metric system operates using base units and prefixes. The base units in the metric system are meters, liters, seconds, and grams. For today's example, we're going to stick to grams and liters. The base unit tells us the type of quantity that we're measuring, and the prefixes are added to describe the range of measurement. For example, mass is measured in grams. To measure something with a large mass, such as an elephant, we use kilograms. To measure something with a small mass, such as a feather, we would use milligrams. So that's why we have prefixes that we attach to the base units. Each prefix is associated with a power of 10, the base unit being 10 to the zero power or one, since anything raised to the zero power is equal to one. Since we're multiplying and dividing by powers of 10, the decimal place is basically changing depending on the prefix. An easy way to convert metric units is by simply moving the decimal place according to the prefix. As long as you can write out the metric prefixes, kilo, hecto, deca, base unit, deci, centi, milli, you can convert metric units using this trick. Here's a mnemonic device to help you remember the metric prefixes. Are you ready? Kings have diamonds, but diamonds cost money. Kings have diamonds, but diamonds cost money. So then if you write out the first letter of each of the prefixes, you can convert starting from there. Take a look. Let's use the example 1000 meters, and we're converting that into kilometers, or km. So to do our conversion, we have to find out where we're starting. We're starting here at meters, or our base unit, and then we're converting it into kilometers. So here we have 1,000 meters, and we have to move the decimal back one, two, three spaces to the left to get to kilometers. If there's no decimal in the given quantity, you can just put a decimal directly after the ones place. So we move one, two, three spaces to the left, and our final answer is 1.000 kilometers or kilometers. And in our final answer, you don't have to include all of those extra zeros necessarily. Our final answer is one kilometer. In this example, we're going to convert 4.5 kilograms into grams. So starting with kilograms, and going to grams. Grams is our base unit. So we're moving from kilo to the base. We're gonna move one, two, three times to the right. So if we write out our number, 4.5, and we move our decimal one, two, three times to the right, filling in our empty spaces now with zeros, our answer is 4,500 grams. We've got 521 milligrams, milli being our prefix, so that's our starting point. And then we're converting to grams, which is our base unit. 
To get from milligrams to grams, we have to move one, two, three times to the left. So if we take our number of 521, place that decimal after the ones place, move it to the left, one, two, three times, and then we can fill in a zero for the ones placeholder. That gives us 0 0.521 grams. We have 2,500 milliliters. In this example, liters is our base unit. We're going to convert from milliliters to liters, moving to the left one, two, three spaces. So we have to write 2,500 and move our decimal to the left. One, two, three spaces. So our final answer, we, can, we don't have to include those extra zeros. So our final answer is 2.5 liters. We're converting 125.5 centiliters into liters. Liters is our base unit, centiliters, that's our prefix, centi. So we're converting from centiliters to liters. We have to move our decimal to the left one, two spaces. So we have 125.5, move the decimal to the left one, two spaces, and that gives us 1.255 liters. Try these examples on your own and leave your answer in the comments below. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. As always, if you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to keep learning chemistry with me. Stay positive and keep learning. Bye.